My name is Noma Jafri. I am 13 years old and go to 8th grade. Today I will be talking about the particle theory. So the particle theory states that matter is made up of particles. So matter is acting around us. It is like a bar of chocolate, this board, a marker and this board, eraser, uh, board itself and the board eraser. It's all made up of matter. Everything is made up of matter. Everything you see around us, even our cells, we are made up of matter. And this matter is made up of particles. And these particles are atoms, molecules, and ions. Now, atoms, molecules, and ions, how, how small are they? I would like you guys to imagine a grapefruit. Okay, this is a grapefruit. Let's say this is a grapefruit or leaf over here, whatever. This is a grapefruit. Now imagine this grapefruit is only made of a certain type of atom, though it is not, but imagine. And now we take every atom and we blow it up to the size of a blueberry. To the size of a blueberry. Now, of course, the whole of this grapefruit will increase in size because we will increase the blueberries, uh, we will increase the atom size of the blueberry. So now our final result, the grapefruit, will be the size of the earth itself. Now that, that is a bit mind staggering, but that is the size of an atom. The, the matter is made of different states, which are solids, liquids, And gases. These are the three main states of matter. There is also a fourth state of matter called plasma, but we will not be talking about that state because mainly solids, liquids, and gases correlate with each other very much. And solids, liquids, and gases have certain properties. Now, a solid has a definite mass, has a definite shape and its volume does not change. It is very, very hard to compress. A liquid has a definite mass, its volume does not change and it takes up the space of the container holding it. A gas has a definite mass, its volume can vary and the shape is the shape it takes up by the container. Now that we have discussed the properties of solids, liquids, and gases, we can move on to their states. How they change from state to state depending on the way they have their particles arranged. Now let's first start the way a solid has its particles arranged. A solid will have its particles very densely packed. Very densely packed. And the particles will vibrate to and fro. But then in a liquid, the particles will, will be more disorganized. They will be moving around each other and the forces of attraction between the particles in the liquid will be less compared to the particles in the solid. And then moving on to gas, the particles in the gas are completely everywhere. They're everywhere. And when they meet each other, they just bounce off each other. So the forces of attraction between gases is very, very small. Let's move on to how they correlate with physical changes. Physical changes are reversible changes, and examples of those will be melting, freezing, condensing, evaporation, sublimation, and so on. So now let's, let's first start with melting. What happens when you melt something? You, you basically reach its melting point. That's where the liquid, I mean, sorry, the solid begins to lose shape. So when it's melting, there is heat being given to the solid. So the solid gets heat. The solid, this is the arranged lattice of the solid. Now it's, when the heat comes into it, instead of vibrating, the particles start moving away from each other. When they move away from each other, they start rolling around each other, which forms the state of a liquid. So they start falling apart and form the liquid. That's when melting happens. Now from melting, we can move on to how things freeze. So that's a liquid turning into a solid. So when the liquid turns into a solid, 
the particles need to be given a cooler condition. So basically, we give them um, its freezing point. So that's about zero degrees Celsius or anything below that, right? So what happens is that the particles, they start losing energy. When the particles lose energy, they start coming back together to form the lattice of a solid. So now, the only movement possible is the vibrations to and fro in a solid. Evaporation is when a liquid evap uh, when a liquid turns into a gas over a range of temperatures. That means that the fast moving particles at the top level of the water start going into the air and turning into a gas. That's when evaporation occurs. But when boiling occurs, the same thing happens that now a huge amount of water is heated to its boiling point, let's say water, it's heated to 100 degrees Celsius. Now, it won't change, but it will stay at that temperature and it will not go to different range of, ranges of temperature. So this temperature will go out through all the particles, form bubbles inside the water, the bubbles will come out, and what's going to happen is that the particles will go into the air and slowly all the particles will go out from the water and turn into a gas. Now, when we have a gas, we want to turn it back into a liquid. That is called condensation. So, now we have a gas, very weak forces of attraction in a gas, very weak forces of attraction. They meet each other and they bounce off. But when condensation happens, a gas is cooled down. So, when two particles meet each other, instead of bouncing off each other, they will start rolling around each other. That will begin to form a liquid. Because they will start rolling around each other instead of just bouncing off each other. So that forms a liquid. So, so a gas to a liquid gives you condensation. The change of condensation. So that's what happens there. And then, now, now let's discuss sublimation. Sublimation is when a gas turns into a solid directly without liquid being between the process. Now how that happens is that the particles in a gas, let's take that for example, particles in a solid, in a gas, sorry, particles in the gas are moving all around. They lose their energy so, so, so quickly that they immediately turn into a solid where only vibration can occur. So they cool down that quickly. But when a solid turns into a gas, it starts gaining so much energy so quickly that it turns into a gas immediately without forming a liquid. Examples of that could be dry ice turning into uh, vapor and iodine. Those are two ex common examples that, that can do sub, that can go through sublimation. Now that we have discussed that, let's, let's, let's see how this actually works. The changes of state, condensation, boiling and all of that, they change the state of matter from solid to liquid to gas. But this happens only because of a certain amount of heat coming to the particles. Um, now we have a solid to a liquid, it melts and the energy adds up. Now a liquid to a gas, again the energy adds up and this is when it boils or evaporates. And then the gas to a liquid, it condenses. The condensation only occurs when it starts cooling down, the particles begin to cool down. And then from a liquid to a solid, it freezes and the particles cool down again. So there's a difference between the um, energy levels between a solid, liquid and gas. That's what allows them to melt, boil, evaporate and freeze, condense, all of that. So that's, that's all about the particle theory. Well, I hope, I hope you like that and um, the explanation of the particle theory and well, goodbye.